Welcome back everybody. In this video, we have to find two vectors that are perpendicular to vectors a, which has components 2, negative 2, and 14, and vector b, 1, 4, negative 3, without using the cross product. So, if we're not going to be using the cross product to find a perpendicular vector, which would be really easy to do, taking the cross product of these would give us a perpendicular vector, what can we do? Well, we can use the dot product. So let's just start off by finding one vector that is perpendicular to both of these using the dot product. And let's call it vector C. Let's say it has components X, Y, Z. So basically what that means is that since this vector is going to be perpendicular to both of these, then the dot product between A and C is going to equal zero. Also, the dot product between uh, B and C, rather, is going to equal zero as well. So starting off here, what's the dot product between A and C going to be? Well, we just multiply the components and add them together. So 2 times x is 2x. Uh, negative 2 times y is negative 2y. And then 14 times z, 14z. And that's equal to zero. What about here? b dot c. Well, 1 times x is just x plus 4 times y times negative 3 or uh, minus 3 times z, and that's going to equal 0 as well. Notice here how we can uh, actually simplify all this. We could divide everything by 2. So we got x minus y plus 7z is equal to 0. So notice now that we have two equations, but we have three unknowns. So what's most likely going to happen is we're going to have an infinite solution. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate for this x here. So x equals, bring this over, so negative y turns into positive y minus 7z. So I'm going to have... I'm going to plug this in here for x. So I got y minus 7z plus 4y minus 3z is equal to 0. So then we got uh, y plus 4y is 5y. And then we got negative 7z minus 3z is negative 10z. That's equal to 0. And then uh, what can we do here? So it means 5y always has to equal. 10z. Divide both sides by 5 means that y is always equal to 2z. Right? So y is always doubled whatever the z value is. And then when we have y and z, we could just plug it in to here or to here and solve for the x. So basically we can pick any value. So let's say we pick uh, z equaling 1. Well if z is equal to 1, what's y going to be? 2 times 1 which is 2, and if z is 1 and y is 2, what's x going to be? It's going to be 2 minus 7 times 1. So 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So right there is a case for vector c. That would be perpendicular to both a and b. So c would be uh, the components negative 5, y is 2, z is 1. So that there is one case. We need two vectors. So let's plug in uh, z equals, I don't know, let's say uh, negative 2. What happens if z is negative 2? Well, 2 times negative 2 would give us negative 4 for y. And then if we plug both of those here, y would be negative 4 minus 7 times negative 2. Negative, negative turned to a positive. So negative 4 plus 14 gives us positive 10 for x. So that there is another case. So vector c can also be 10, negative 4, and negative 2. And you could have also uh, noticed how these two vectors are collinear. We're basically multiplying this vector by uh, negative 2 to get this one. You could have also took this vector and then multiply it by any scalar to get another one. Right, because if this vector c, so we got these two vectors a and b, 
if this vector c is perpendicular to both of them, it's kind of sticking out, well, that means any other collinear vector is going to be perpendicular to those as well. And technically, it's a different vector. All right, so without using the cross product, you can always find perpendicular vectors. You just got to make sure the dot product is equal to zero. And then you got to do some algebra and we get to this case here. And then we can pick an infinite amount. Now, another thing we can do is we can check our answer. So we can actually take this vector C here and take the dot product between C and A and test it out. So two times negative five is negative 10. Negative two times two is negative four. So that would be negative 14 if we add those up. And then 14 times one is positive 14. Negative 14 plus 14 is zero, right? What about taking the dot product between C and B? So negative five times one plus four times two so that would be negative five plus eight, which is positive three, and then three, negative three times one is negative three. Three minus three is zero as well. So whenever you get this, you can just test it. And then you can just find collinear vectors to find that other vector, and that will always work as well. All right, so a bit of a more complex process if you're not using the cross product, but nevertheless, it does work.